Hi there, welcome to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to talk about fileless malware. Thank you for tuning in. As the name suggests, fileless malware infects computers leaving behind no trace on the local hard drive. This allows such infection to go unnoticed as most antivirus and forensic tools identify attacks using signature-based or pattern-based validation. Using a mind map, I will cover the basics of fileless malware, what it is, how it propagates, what defense options we have currently, and we'll look at some examples of fileless malware. So what is fileless malware? It is a malware which has evolved. It is a new strain, a new technique of attack. It is also termed as non-malware. It basically initiates its malicious activities from the memory itself. So it lives in memory and piggyback on other trusted programs to identify and exploit vulnerabilities that may be unknown or not yet patched up on a machine. It leaves no trace on the hard disk or in some cases the code exists but is shrouded underneath a trusted program. We will discuss more on this later. Fileless malware can evade the traditional antivirus and malware programs because the signature based technique that is popularly used by most protection layers requires the payload or the malicious code to exist in a file. It is categorized under Advanced Volatile Threat Group AVT. This group includes threats that are initiated from the volatile memory, also known as the RAM, and will remove traces of its existence when it is done. So let's look at the how part of it. How does the attack happen? As is with most threats, the entry point is most often the browser or an email that has a clickbait to lure the user to perform an action. Once the action is performed and the malicious code is loaded in memory, based on its design, it will try different alternatives to exploit the machine. So it could piggyback on a legitimate program such as PowerShell, Windows management instrumentation, or be disguised as a macro in a Word or Excel file, and then try to gain the access available to the hooked onto trusted program and misuse it. A fileless malware could also drop an entry in the registry to allow it to get spawned across system restarts. or a fileless malware could simply remain active as long as the machine is on and try to exploit vulnerabilities it was designed for. So it's just simply running in the memory, identifying whatever is open for attack. It's a program lurking in the background, just waiting for the right opportunity to come by. Okay, let's look at the protection layer. What kind of protection do we have? As I mentioned, wherever I get a chance, get rid of that admin access on your login. Office users should not have admin access granted on their login. For home machines, remove admin from your login and create a separate local admin account. You can use this local admin account when there is a genuine need to install software or alter settings. The default login which you will use will perform the application activities such as email, browser or run local programs 
and these do not require admin access. If, if you are able to eliminate admin access, it is the root cause of 90% of the problems out there. This is the most common problem on Windows machine. Get rid of that admin access, period. The next important point on my list, educate yourself and your users. Send them short and frequent security related communications. Call in for a discussion or have periodic trainings all in the name of protection of information assets. This also avoids financial losses for the company. It's also reputation. It, it also prevents the reputation loss. It is very important aspect connect with the users, teach them, educate them. Educate users to not open and forward emails or links that are not from trusted parties. Such simple careless actions can result in complex reactions and losses. One more point which is optional but worth considering. Cold boot your machine when the work is done. Don't be lazy to just sleep or keep the machine running for days. A machine with a longer uptime is a good breeding ground for AVT group threats. Next, invest in a rock solid web filtering solution and create appropriate access policies. Do not aim at locking down users. Instead, Focus on eliminating the risk categories and unused protocols. There are a lot of wonderful softwares out there. Example like Bluecoat, Zscaler, WebSense. There are a lot many softwares. Invest in one of these and deploy it at enterprise level. This, this basically means all endpoints should be covered under the umbrella of a web filtering solution. Give preference to a cloud web filtering solution. This is very good for endpoints which are traveling around connecting to multiple networks apart from the corporate network. There are web filtering solutions even for home use. Google for it, there are wonderful solutions out there. This is a worthwhile investment. Next point, invest in a rock solid email filter for corporates having their own email hosting Install enterprise email filtering solutions such as Barracuda, Symantec, Trend Micro, etc. etc. There, there are a lot many out there. Do your due diligence, find out which is good for your company, get it installed. All emails should come through a filtering solution. Your email filter will block junk and spam emails. Very important for the company and very important for ignorant users in spite of having a junk and spam email filter in place there's a possibility that certain percentage of spam emails could trickle in and this is where the user education would come into play if you have educated your users and if you have made if you have made them IT savvy they would be smart enough to avoid clicking such emails next important point invest in a rock solid endpoint protection apart from the signature based prevention technique and the machine learning techniques the protection program should also provide exploit protection and prevention technology this would proactively seal the exploits that are still not fixed using OS patches. This could even sandbox old releases of software, legacy software that cannot be updated due to critical application dependencies. There could be software which uh, use an old version of Java and this could create a threat on the endpoints as well as on the servers. Sandboxing is a good option provided by some of the protection softwares. 
the product should also have a streaming prevention technique this is something new carbon black is a protection suite that use streaming prevention techniques in this approach individual machine activities are monitored and profiled they are categorized and trust level assigned now in the course of activities performed on a machine the defense layer will continue to monitor behind the scene as soon as an activity deviates from the existing profiles or is getting into low trust zone the defense layer would raise an alarm and prevent the wrongdoing before it actually happens it should be noted the protection software is continuously monitoring behind the scene and learning from the activities that are being performed on a machine and profiling them it is possible that a good amount of false positive is raised in the initial days and admins will be involved in clearing up such kind of alarms it would happen in the initial days and uh, after a, a period of learning the the software becomes smart enough to understand what is the right profile and what is deviating from the expected workload on the machine here are some of the examples of protection suites which are available in the market now the apart from these there are a lot many antivirus and anti malware protection suites out there do your due diligence look at all the software find out what is best fit for your organization we have got products like bit defender got trend micro malware bytes kaspersky mcafee samantic carbon black what i just talked about in the previous point etc now it is possible that you can deploy more than one protection layer on an endpoint for example you could have bit defender antivirus protection running on your machine and you could double it up with malware bytes or you could have trend micro and you can add malware bytes layer on top of it the advantage here is the traditional antivirus software are very good at protecting the older generation of threats threats which have existed for years and years software such as malware bytes are very good at identifying and tracking the modern generation of threats here are some examples of fileless malware facebot angler lurk trojan cauter powerlinks this completes my presentation fileless malware has been in existence for few years but not many attacks have been reported this is one of the areas which would be a cause of concern going forward because not many protections exist and it's not easy to detect such kind of attacks it will all depend on what kind of prevention techniques you use it's difficult to identify such kind of attacks which are residing in memory and then trying to identify loopholes or exploits on your system Thank you for your patience. I hope this video was useful in explaining what is a fileless malware and what you can do. Apart from what I have highlighted over here, there is a lot of change happening in the security domain. It is important that subject matter experts keep themselves updated about the latest and propose the right protection layer for companies as well as for home use